What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Before we get started here today, I just want to let you know Nintendo's financial numbers should be out for the second quarter of their fiscal year. That should be out sometime today if it's not already out by the time you're watching this. And there will be a separate video today about them. So don't worry, I will cover those. Media Creates will then fall to the following news wave. So tomorrow's news wave, we'll be talking about the Media Create numbers. But keep an eye out for the fiscal quarter numbers from Nintendo that should give us an idea of how many switches are out there from the last number we saw, which was 2.7, I think 4 million. We'll see how much they've actually gained with all the supply shortages. But for now, there's some other stuff I want to talk about, including a big upgrade from the Minecraft team for the Switch. So let's get started with that. Now, if you don't remember Minecraft when it released on the Switch, it was 720p across the board, whether it was in handheld mode or if it was docked on your TV. And that was a little weird to a lot of people because of course the Switch becomes faster when you dock it because of course there is no more battery that can constrain the processor. So in that case, they clocks up to then meet the challenge of your 1080p TV and get as close to that 1080p resolution as it can. I know obviously some games like Zelda, for example, example does 900p but then you have things like Mario Kart and ARMS doing 1080p. Even Splatoon, despite its dynamic resolution, does hit 1080p a good bit of the time. And Minecraft, for some reason, was 720p on your TV. And Microsoft had this weird issue with going from handheld mode to dock mode and changing resolution. They made it very apparent that there was something, a bug they were having with Minecraft where it, they just, you know, 720p across the board. Well, now the new patch makes it 1080p when docked and 720p when undocked in handheld mode. They also had a, a bunch of other updates as well. So if you, if you have not played Minecraft uh, in the past couple days, maybe in the last week or so, if you, if you turn it on now, it may have already updated depending on how your switch is set up. Cause if the switch is kind of in sleep mode on your dock, for example, and it's, it's on, it will technically be able to get the update even if it's if you're not playing it which is pretty cool otherwise if you go to it and you access the internet it should prompt you for a patch that will then give you that 1080p resolution on your tv and then a slew of other bug fixes and what i think is happening right now is minecraft is getting the switch version kind of up to snuff for the soon to be super duper graphics pack that is going to bring the uh the switch version the xbox one version everything kind of going to the new optimized engine now, of course, the new Bedrock engine is, is the big thing they're pushing to allow you to play on multiple different platforms. It's really what's going to help bring the Xbox One and the Switch version together. And that's why a lot of people were confused about Sony's decision to kind of forego this whole thing because Minecraft is large. And obviously, at this point, Microsoft is full full steam ahead with this thing, trying to get the Switch version ready to go for when they do eventually pull that Switch and then you can play across the board, which should be cool. It's interesting that they did get that figured out because they made it seem like it was a big deal, like they were going to have a hard time and they might just leave it at 720p. But I guess, hey, they really wanted a 1080p. They're ready to eventually roll out the Bedrock engine for everything across the board. And of course, Minecraft Realms is also coming to the Switch, so which is like their server side, uh, their server side platform where they can host worlds for you on uh, Mojang's servers, which is pretty cool. And it's going to the Switch as well as the Xbox One PC. Basically, they're going to unify everything. So this is interesting. I really want to see how that all works together because that means that the world size would have to be very similar or at least the same. So I guess that means that the Switch's world size will be the same as the Xbox One's world size. It's going to be very interesting when they do unify everything under one umbrella. I'm very curious to see that. But in the meantime, if you have Minecraft on the Switch, maybe you haven't played in a while, go boot it up and check it out. Yeah, a bunch of bug fixes. And now 1080p resolution on the TV. Pretty cool. Next up is the NES Classic, strangely. Now, of course, very difficult to find the NES Classic, right? Obviously, when, when they stopped making them, Nintendo did, it became very expensive online because everyone now, well, hey, they're limited now, right? <laughs> You're not going to walk into most stores and get them. Until the other day, specifically yesterday, some NES classics popped up on a certain website called ThinkGeek. Now, maybe you're familiar with them. Well, GameStop owns ThinkGeek. If you did not know that, they purchased them a while back to, I think, help them with the uh, declining game sales for them because obviously digital, they want to do something you can't really download, which is kind of apparel and, and kind of like, you know, coffee mugs and, and all that stuff that ThinkGeek sells. Well, it looks like they were bundling NES classics that generally retail for $60, of course, with an MSRP that a store like a GameStop would stick to, except they're bundling it in with stuff from ThinkGeek, which is kind of interesting because now people are trying to figure out where did GameStop get these NES classics? Were they holding them back in their warehouses? Uh, did they just happen to get more in, strangely? You know, it's really hard to say. None of us are behind the scenes, so I'm not sure how we would know. 
does it make a good business decision to hold them back? I mean, yeah, technically, yes, because you can do this. Now, GameStop has uh, been caught doing some odd things. When Xenoblade came out on the Wii, they were opening them up uh, per tons of reports, and because they can inflate the used price, they were reselling them as used and not new. It was very weird. Uh, people were talking about it all over the place, and they even caught some examples of it in store. And yes, GameStop has been known to do borderline shady stuff like this. So it's very possible, it is, that these were held back NES classics that they are now pairing with Think Geek Apparel that maybe does not sell the best for them separately. And you know what, $140 is the cheapest package. And right now, honestly, the NES Classic goes for more than that online most places. So, I mean, I guess it's the cheapest way to get it from an actual retailer. So it's not the worst thing in the world. It's just odd, I will say that, for GameStop to do it, because they could technically drive a ton of traffic into their brick and mortar stores that they want more business in by just placing those in there, or conversely, they could open them and call them used and sell them for $100, and they would probably walk right out the door pretty quick. Uh, either way, it's there. If you go to Think Geek, you can check out the NES Classics. As far as I can tell, they're still in stock, so there you go. We've talked about Lawbreakers a good bit here on this channel because they did the whole thing where they said the Switch didn't have enough buttons. It's an interesting-looking shooter, I guess, for some people who like the competitive Unreal-style shooters, and they had a closed beta that did not go as well as I think they wanted it to. Not a lot of people signed in. I think at the height of the beta. They had like 5,000 people on Steam. Well, it looks like they're going with a full open beta between the PS4 and the PC starting July 28th, and they're going to allow you to preload it ahead of time, so when they do flip that switch, turn the servers on, you can just go right into the game. Maybe there's like a small patch or something you have to download, but for the most part, the large file size will be downloaded. They'll be starting that in the next couple days, and if you just go on your PS4 or your PC, you can get into the open beta, download the client, and just be ready for when they open up the servers might be worth checking out if you've at least kind of glanced at it and thought about maybe this could be fun to buy. Well, you could try it out for free now in an open beta. That's great because that's how beta should be. You're testing it for them with their server load or balancing weapons or levels. Should be free. I like the idea of an open beta over this weekend. So even if you're looking for something to play this weekend, hey, you can try out Lawbreakers. Might be fun. Next up, we had two games get dates for the Nintendo Switch, starting with Rayman Legends, the Definitive Edition, which is coming out September 12th. And that's going to be, I mean, it's going to be Rayman. People are going to enjoy it. They're also going to have a demo this summer. Now, we saw the demo, I guess, accidentally go up on the European eShop, and then it got pulled down. But yes, they're going to have a demo for people to try out sometime this summer, is all they've said. And then when we get into September, you can buy the actual game. If you enjoy Rayman Legends, you'll like it on the Switch, I guess. It's it's a, it's a portable version of it, so there you go, on the Switch, and it, with its nice screen and everything. And then, of course, we also had Lost Sphere, which is from Square Enix, January 23rd worldwide, October 12th in Japan. So Japan will have a head start on that game. And, of course, it is the follow-up to I Am Setsuna. So if you enjoyed the I Am Setsuna kind of look, the way it played, you'd probably like Lost Sphere. It's coming, like I said, later on, 2018, and Japan will just get a little earlier. It happens that way. They have to spend time localizing it, translating it, all that stuff to bring it over. At least we're getting it, right? That's the way I look at it. And in our last bit of news today, interesting stuff is going on on the eShop, specifically with these indie developers. We talked about it just yesterday, right, with Stardew Valley, and now there was a game that was supposed to release yesterday. I haven't seen it popped up on the eShop at all, and this is Infinite Golf, which is, it's like a little kind of mini golf style game that looks kind of fun if you enjoy mini golf. People have played it before. It's on Steam, it's on PS4, it's on the Xbox One right now. The Switch version was supposed to launch the same day, which was yesterday, and it still hasn't come out. In fact, Zen Studios has gone on Twitter with a constant barrage of updates, pretty much saying they, they're waiting on Nintendo. Nintendo is supposed to still be approving it, and for some reason, something is going on behind the scenes where someone on Nintendo's side appears to be dragging their feet with this whole situation. And it's weird because, like I said yesterday, we're seeing so many games get like pushed back randomly from what seems to be Nintendo's side just taking a while to get things done. I mean, this game, we didn't hear anything about a delay up until the day of release when it was supposed to be coming out. And we saw it on the eShop, the Dates have changed for different games. This one is just weird. It doesn't even look like a, like a massive game or something that would be hard to approve. So I have no idea what's going on. I'm hoping maybe one of you guys have heard about this game, maybe know some background to it with Zen Studios. Maybe something has been going on between them and Nintendo. It's just weird. I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on, and it's getting me a little concerned going forward with some of these indie games, because Nintendo has made a big deal about their indie game library that's coming up, right? I mean, they even call them Nindies, you know, the summer of the indie games, and, and now they're all having a hard time just launching on the eShop. So 
I'm not really sure what's going on right now. I hope they get it sorted out. This game actually looked fun. I was going to play it today on camera with you guys, but I have to wait for it to launch, I guess. It looked fun. It looks like you build your own mini golf courses. You can download them, but it's it's not out yet, so we have to wait. Hopefully, it's, it's approved and done and out in the next day or so, but... Right now, we're all just kind of sitting around wondering what's going on with these indie games. And that's it for News Wave today, guys. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know what you think about any of the things we talked about today, whether it is Minecraft going to 1080p, getting a bunch of bug fixes, pretty much ready to roll for the Super Duper Graphics Pack and the Bedrock Engine that is going to pretty much unify all of the versions, except for the PS4 version, strangely. I still don't understand what's going on there. And it'll be Minecraft, just, I guess, much better. I, I don't know. Some people are, are a fan of the older Minecraft, which is fine. I get it. There are a lot of people who are fans of the older World of Warcraft games, and they don't like the newer one. But at this point, it's going to be really cool to have everything unified under one umbrella, and everyone can kind of play together, and it doesn't matter what system you're on. I think that's kind of what everyone wants for the future of games. You know what? It doesn't matter what system you have. Everyone can just play together. And I think that's... I, I love this step from Microsoft and Nintendo to get that worked out. I just I don't understand Sony's position here. It's very weird. Also, let me think about the NES Classic, kind of this bundle that ThinkGeek and GameStop are doing. I'm curious if you are thinking about buying one and if you do buy one let me know in the future how it gets to you and if it's actually like the real thing it's it's weird that they would hold this stock back just for bundles maybe they did come across more i don't know that's it for now guys keep an eye out for the video later on today about all of the financials from nintendo should be fun to see how many switches are out there that's it for now guys i'll see you next time